Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. In the past few weeks, I've created two videos about how to use image blending with Affinity Photo for the purpose of enhancing dynamic range in very high contrast scenes. After that video, there were some excellent questions and comments on the differences between image blending and HDR, another method of increasing dynamic range. So in today's video, I'm going to compare image blending with HDR and answer the question, which method is best for increasing dynamic range in an image? So let's start off with this first set of raw images, which are exactly the same ones used in my image blending video. Let's start off by HDR merging the images with Affinity Photo. So to create the HDR, click File, click New HDR Merge, click Add, select the raw files, Note that Affinity Photo's HDR tool will take care of things like image alignment, ghosting, and noise reduction automatically. Then click OK. Once the tone mapping is done, you are presented with several presets. The best looking ones to my eyes are the detailed and natural preset. So that's what we're going to select for comparison. Once you're satisfied, you can export the HDR image. Now let's compare the results. For comparison, here is one of the original RAW files. This exposure is overexposed by two stops. And I think this is the proper exposure for this image. Here is Affinity Photo's HDR result with the natural preset applied. The main issue I have with this result is the lack of contrast in this image. The image is also a bit too underexposed. Let's move on to the next preset, which is the detailed preset. The tone mapping is much better here as there is significantly more contrast in this image and that results in a sharper, more pleasing image. The main concern here though is if you look closely at the lamps, there is very little detail in it. I would wish the highlights to be reduced further to allow us to see some of the fine detail in the lamps. Let's try to reduce the highlights in this HDR image. As you can see here, Affinity's HDR tone sliders has problems bringing back detail in the highlights. This is because it loses the dynamic range of the raw file once the image is tone mapped. So that's one disadvantage of Affinity Photo's HDR. Here is Lightroom's tone mapping. As you can see, it doesn't have the problem of bringing back detail in the highlights that Affinity has. In addition, it also has some vibrant color and contrast compared to Affinity's HDR. Finally, here is the image blend result. Notice the difference in color and exposure compared to the HDR version from both Affinity and Lightroom. We also successfully brought back detail in the lamps. Now let's look at the second image. And again, this is the same image we used in the first image blending tutorial using Affinity Photo. So for comparison, here is the original raw file, again overexposed by two stops, which I think is the best exposure to represent the scene. Here is the tone mapped image from Affinity using the natural preset. Affinity's tone mapping did do a great job of recovering detail in the lights. My main problem though with this result is the image lost a lot of contrast. You can see this in the blue texture of the ion building, which was so vibrant in the original shot. The colors also do appear a little bit muted than I would like. Here is the tone mapped image from Affinity using the detailed preset. Note that there is much more detail in this shot. And once again, this is a better result than the natural preset from Affinity. Here is Lightroom's HDR result. Compared to Affinity, Lightroom once again has produced a more vibrant and contrasty image. Though out of the box, the colors seem to me a little bit too unnaturally saturated. Nevertheless, I prefer this HDR result to that of Affinity. Now here is the result of the image blending. As you can see here, using image blending has maintained the natural colors of the original image as we refine the mask to affect only the lights in this image and not the background and the surroundings. So once again, here are the results.
So to summarize, which one is better? As you've seen here, the quality of HDR output varies greatly from editor to editor and from image to image. So it's quite difficult to give a blanket rule on whether HDR or image blending is better. However, let me just offer some general rules on when to use HDR versus image blending. Use HDR merge if you prefer simplicity, you don't want to spend too much time on the editing process, you'd rather spend time taking the photos, you like the look of the HDR results you're getting, you generally like the output of your HDR editor. And if you want to know which are the best HDR editors out there, do check out my video on that topic. On the other hand, use image blending if your HDR editor is not giving the desired results. You don't mind the extra complexity, like having to manually align images, create layers, paint on a mask, so forth and so on. You want full control over the blending or merging process, and that includes which tones are affected and how much each tone is affected, you want a more natural looking image. Since image blending is more of a manual rather than automated process, there's less chance for image blending to adjust tone and color excessively as in HDR. So I hope you found this video helpful. Do let me know if you prefer image blending or HDR, and whatever your preference is, do let me know what your preferred software is. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. And till the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.